Hello and welcome to the nation's spectator track, Wakefield Park Raceway for the fourth and final round of the 2018 Australian Super Truck Championship. Over the next three races, we're going to learn who will become the 2016 Australian Super Truck Champion. Stephen Zabbitt is in the box seat and lining up for his sixth national title, but he's going to face some tough opposition from the likes of Shannon Smith and Barry Butwell over the course of the weekend. Let's have a look at the championship points coming into the weekend and it's a pretty handy advantage for Zamet at the top of the points table and it's a tight contest between Shannon Smith and Barry Butwell in the battle for second position. Marcus Prilwitz is fourth in the standings. Lachlan Fern, the best of the light trucks. His Isuzu is in position five. Yeah, I'm going for my sixth title. Um, we've had a good successing, successful year with um, all the three race meetings here at Wakefield and two at Winton. And we've won um, all those three and we've got a good points haul coming into this weekend. So looking very confident. Um, the truck's on fire, mate. It's, it's absolutely lighting fast. So I'm very happy with the performance. We've got a, a friend of ours, Jackson Brown. He's uh, got diagnosed last year with leukaemia. And um, so far this year, I've brought home four trophies or three trophies for him. And, we're going to try and get him his fourth one today. I'm doing this one for Jackson this year and hopefully we can win it for him. Our series has been fantastic. It's um, everybody's, um, everybody's really on board. They're really pumping their trucks to, to get in front of each other. Re regardless of whether they're slower at the moment, they're really putting the, putting the pressure on the teams to, to get them up there and moving. So it, it's been really, really good. We've had a good series so far this year. It's been going all right. We had a terrible start in round one, but um, we got better through the season, it's been good. Yeah, we're going to try and finish on the top, but we'll, it's a, there's a lot of tough competitors out there, so we'll see how it goes. Well, the track's good. I've had the, probably the best drive uh, of the weekend just this morning in the warm-up. The truck's handling well, the, track's, the track feels good. Oh, yeah, actually, I wish I would have qualified as well as I did the warm-up this morning, but it eh, wasn't to be. My truck's not the fastest truck out there in a straight line, so... I tend to, you know, when I've got traffic behind me, I drive defensively. That's that's the only way I've got a, any hope of, um, of, uh, of getting a reasonable place. Yeah, it's good. Uh, bit of tough competition out there. Stephen's uh, going well. Barry's uh, in good shape, so see how it pans out. The main straights, um, we get uh, one one fifty nine point five, so we're limited to one sixty. We get penalised if we go over the one sixty mark, so we're right on the money there. So we're pretty happy with that. Barry and I are fighting for second position, so it's pretty much um, Barry and I, and he's, he's got it uh, running pretty good at the moment, so it'll be a tough competition. Uh, it's a European truck, white Volvo, runs a Cummins 14 litre. It's putting out about 1,400 horsepower at the moment. Hard likes this track. It's a big, big, long, fast track. It can really stretch its legs out, so we'd, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll make up a bit of time on this track. Um, for the little trucks, Winton's a bit better, more corners, a bit more competitive for us. Here it's more straight, so we can't really keep up with the big ones. Yeah, pretty good this year. It's been uh, exciting, um, you know, a few new trucks and and uh, mixing it up. So it's been it's been a really good year. Ours is a little SBR. It's a very early model truck, but it's got a late uh, later model engine in it. Um, you know, so it's it's a bit more nimble than the bigger trucks. Uh, so around the tighter bends and whatnot, we're a little bit quicker. Uh, but you know, down the straights, we. Uh, you know, obviously lack a bit of horsepower over the big trucks, but, uh, you know, we're, we're there to keep them honest. Oh, it's great, you know, everyone's good. All socialised, um, everyone helps out. Need a helping hand, someone gives you a hand here, there, you know. Everyone's just good. Love it. Wakefield Park, it, it's good. It's, um, it's good for the straights, but I'm more of a Winton fan because Winton is just, I don't know, the track's a bit more better for, for my truck, I don't know, because it's got two straights in there. This one's only got one, so it's just a bit harder to catch up to everyone else. Time to take a closer look at the Wakefield Park circuit, the 2.2 kilometre venue in at the Southern Highlands of New South Wales. We ride on board with the Volvo of Robbie Fern. Down through turn number one, you run right out as far to the left as you can to make sure that you have a nice wide turning for turn number two, because it's all about carrying momentum and carrying as much exit speed for the run up the hill as possible. Moving back to the right-hand side of the circuit for the left-hand kink at turn number three, you sacrifice a bit of entry speed there to make sure that you're well positioned for the run over the top of the hill through turn number four. Another right-hander at turn five takes you back down the hill. 
the exit ripple strip there has been widened. You use a lot of it. You use a lot of the inside ripple strip here through turn number six. Turn seven, it's all about setting yourself up for the braking approach to the fish hook, one of the overtaking opportunities here at the Wakefield Park circuit. A few different lines that you can take through the fish hook. Robbie Third running it nice and wide on the exit before setting himself up for the next right hander in at turn number nine. You can carry a fair speed through that corner once again using all of the road on the exit down the back straight on the brakes just before the 50 metre board. Nice late turn in, late apex because you want to get back on the power as early as you can for the run back onto the start, finish straight, shifting up through the gears. And that is a complete lap of Wakefield Park on board the Volvo of Robbie Fern, who you'll be seeing in action in the next three races. Set for race number two of the weekend for the Australian Super Truck Championship season finale. Three positions determined based on the results from race one, which was held yesterday. Stephen Zammett on pole position ahead of Barry Butwell, back to Shannon Smith. Robbie Fern out of fourth position. Craig Yardy, the best of the light trucks, in position number five. I'm joined in commentary for this race by Gary O'Brien. And Gary Stephen Zammett once again holding the ascendancy at the front of the field. And already a bit of a bump with Barry Butwell before the race even starts. Yeah, hello Lockie, hello everyone. And uh, you can see the mind games have already been played out. There's a little bit of push and shove. And this is just to let uh, the champion elect, I guess, because he might not be quite there yet if Barry Butwell has his way. And we're having a look from Robbie Ferns truck as he follows these two down so he's going to get a bird's eye view of what happens down at turn one. So set for the double file rolling start race number two of the weekend for the super trucks from Wakefield Park and a good start for Stephen Zabbitt and for Barry Butwell. Craig Yardy up on the inside of Marcus Prilwitz as they head down into turns one and two but it is Zabbitt who will lead them through ahead of Butwell and Shannon Smith then we go back to Robbie Fern and Marcus Prilwitz who are engaged in a pretty vigorous battle as they head up the hill out of turn two on this opening lap. Yeah, it's all about getting that acceleration out of the corners. And as you can see, Zammett, just a little bit clear. It's not so clear for Butwell, though. He's got uh, Shannon Smith right on his hammer at the moment, trying to find a way through. And Robbie Fern's got Marcus Prilwitz right on his hammer as well. Marcus Prilwitz in the truck that's driven through a full manual gearbox, unlike the semi-automatic gearboxes that a lot of the other trucks use. Craig Yardy in the light truck having a look on the outside of Prilwitz as they head into the fish hook as well. And we saw in the back of the field that Lachlan Fern and Anthony Tringali were also having a good dice at the tail end. So good battles all the way up and down the field. But Stephen Zammett with clear track has put his head down and built a bit of a buffer over Barry Butwell in second place. Yeah, they've been the rivals all season, haven't they? And even though Zammett has won all three rounds leading into this one, they haven't been easy. Butwell has really taken a challenge up to the five-time champ, and um, he can only just go forward from there. That's what he's looking at. He can't do it this year. He'll be back stronger and bigger next year. And in the previous round of Winton in particular, Barry Butwell was really strong and had a couple of race victories. It was only a bit of bad luck in one of the races that presented, prevented him from taking the fight right up to Stephen Zammett in that contest for the round win. Across the top of the circuit, they come in a big sideways moment for Shannon Smith. Full opposite lock at turn four. He had the right wheels right across the apex curb but manages to hold on to it. Yeah, the big... The only advantage you really get is what you get out of the corners. And uh, we've well, seen from when we were looking inside Craig Yardy's truck that he doesn't have that. Here we go, replay of that uh, as he tries to drive it out almost before he's in the corner. He's on the gas and at least that straightens him up, stops him from having a, um, a wipeout spin. We know that these truck prime movers are big, heavy vehicles, but the way that the drivers like to get physical with wrestling them over the curbs, you would be forgiven for thinking that there's something a lot smaller and lighter. There was a good shot of Stephen Zammett at the wheel of the Kenworth that has been so successful in truck competition and he's going to need to maintain his focus here because he's under some pressure from Barry Butwell. Looked like he had a full load on behind him, the attitude he had in the truck. And as we see in the background, Fern runs a little bit wide. Prilwitz gets through on him, so he's picked up a position in the second of the Mack Superliners. 
Barry Buntwell looking racy up in second position. We know that these trucks have got their strengths and weaknesses in different parts of the track. Stephen Zanitz always had really good acceleration out of the slower corners, but Barry Buntwell gets a good run up the hill out of turn two, and he'll swing to the outside at turn three. They'll go side by side, and Buntwell has the preferred inside line for turn number four. Zanitz looks to do the switchback. Awesome racing between the two front runners, and this is a look at Prilwitz getting down on the inside. As you mentioned there, Gary, Robbie Fern just running a bit wide on the exit of turn number 10 and opening up that opportunity for Prilwitz to sneak on through. Yeah, we see Robbie Fern from inside the cab as he runs a bit wide, curses himself for that little error that's dropped him back a slot. Let's have a look at the rear angle from Barry Butwell's Max Superliner. So this was up the hill around the outside. It's hard enough to do that in a car, let alone a truck. But Butwell's pulled it off. Terrific I, move. I was going to say in a go-kart, let alone in one of these monsters. But he managed to do it. And here's another look. So it was drive out of the corner. You were saying Zamek gets drive out of the corner. Well, but it, Butwell just had a little bit more on that occasion. And there was the difference, and almost brought himself undone as a result as well. He had a bit of a twitch up going into three, but he had the preferred line into four, and Zamet couldn't come back on the inside of him. Good clean racing between those two, and it's not done yet either on the exit of the official side by side. Zamet down the inside into turn nine. It will be Butwell on the right hand side. They make contact and they'll continue their drag race down into turn number 10, the final corner. Butwell will be on the inside. Zamet might just have to try and tuck back in or maybe do the switchback. And also starting to become involved in this dice as well is Shannon Smith. So it's becoming a three-way battle for the lead. You could see Zamet tried to go the uh, narrow line out of that last corner and see if he could get a run on Butwell, but it wasn't to happen. Look at the way that uh, rear suspension arms are working on that back superliner as well. So they're getting the traction is all about uh, managing the wheel spin as well. There's Steve Zammett continuing to work hard behind the wheel of the Kenworth. Done a lot of fitness training and lost a lot of weight over the off season. Steve and Zammett, he's in really, really prime physical shape and he needs to be because this is physical combat that he's involved in in these super truck races. He drops the wheels over the exit ripple strip coming down the hill out of turn number five. And you notice there that it, when you say physical, you weren't kidding because the, you wouldn't like to have been standing between them previous up. Heavy goes again, has another run out of turn eight. Can he get it done this time? He looks like he might have. We have to wait and see on the external. No, he hasn't done it. Now sits back on the inside, gets the tail out just a, bit, a little bit. Now he has a good solid run as they get into turn 10. But is he close enough? Not quite. Swings back across to the outside, Stephen Zammett. So that's two laps in a row where those trucks have been side by side through turn nine. Again, hard enough to see cars going side by side through that corner, but the trucks are putting on a great show here at Wakefield Park. It looks like he might have a drama too because Smith has just gone past him across the control line. We weren't expecting this, so whether one of those rubs may have just done something, have to just wait and see. Can he hold on to get to the flag? That's the next thing. Stephen Zemmett just blasted past him like he was standing still, so Butwell now with a bit more of a comfortable lead. And here's a replay, and that was the easiest move that Shannon Smith will ever have to make. Just drive straight past Stephen Zammett in a straight line down the main straight. He might have uh, another target in front of him now if he can get close enough to Barry Butwell. He might have a go at him as well. And keep in mind, Gary, that these are the two drivers battling for second in the championship, so it's important which one of these drivers finishes ahead of the other. Yeah, coming into this round, it was Smith, but it was only by a couple of points. And now he will be trying his utmost to try and get to this race leader. So Butwell leads, but Smith, you can see, is pushing really hard, trying to close down the margin to the Max Superliner ahead. In terms of uh, lap times, fastest lap of the race has been set by Shannon Smith. He was half a second quicker than Barry Butwell on the previous lap, so the margin is now less than a second as they cross the start-finish line. Yeah, Butwell didn't help his cause by getting wide out of Turn 10 on that occasion, and we can even see Smith is trailing just a little bit of debris off the side of the mudguard there. And as we get the replay, you can see Butwell gets out on the dirt. You might not think that's much, but you just lose traction, and that can be all the difference. You lose traction, and more importantly than that, you lose momentum, which 
prevents you from maybe getting up to your top speed as quickly as some of the others. This battle's been going on all race between Marcus Prilwitz and Robbie Fern. Prilwitz down the inside at turn two. Deep under brakes, can he pull it up? Yes, he can, but Fern might have the better run up the hill. He does. does. Gets that spot back. No worries about Kane changing gears in this white prime mover, whereas we've seen Pruitt's going back down through the gearbox to pull his up. Another shot from inside Pruitt's. Can he have another shot at him before this race is over? As Fern gets a little bit sideways out of turn at five at the top of the track. Now he'll have to have a look down the fish hook. The fish hook really is the place where he can probably get it done if he can get the right drive and the right line out of this corner. And Fern helps him a little bit by getting us somewhat sideways out of that corner. Meanwhile, we go back to our race leaders. Problem there for Robbie Fern was that he checked up the momentum of Prillwitz, but we do have the checkered flag at the ready this time around. He took a couple of race wins at Winton in the previous round, and Barry Butwell is going to be victorious here at Wakefield Park. He wins race two for the final round of the Australian Super Truck Championship ahead of Shannon Smith. Stephen Zabbitt falling a fair way off the pace in the last couple of laps and in fact he'll do very well to hold on to third position coming home just ahead of Robbie Fern and Marcus Prilwitz. Yeah, that was an interesting one there. We'll try and catch up and see what happened to him as a result. But no unlucky number 13 for Barry Butwell. He got the win. May not be able to win the series but he's also moved back to second position in the championship title chase. Indeed he has, so the final finishing order there, less than a second at the line between Butwell and Smith. And uh, equally, Stephen Zammett was only about eight tenths of a second ahead of Robbie Fern there at the finish. So very, very close margins between first and second and then third and fourth. Lachlan Fern, the best of the light trucks down in position number seven. Yeah, good win, a bit of fun out there. Um pretty tough out there battling with Steve for the first few laps there. I don't know what happened to him, but something mechanical was going wrong with the truck. But nevertheless, we had Shannon behind us and he's got that thing going well and he was putting the pressure on me. So it's been good though, the win. Yeah, me and Steve had a couple of little rubs out there when we were up beside each other. It, um, but that's what happens when you're racing that close. There's not much room on those corners. <laughs> Well, reverse grid is going to be hard because we've got to come through the pack and there's some fast trucks out there and getting through it, if you can get through it, you, you're a champion. <laughs> Came second behind Barry. He's uh, hard to catch. He's going uh, going really well. The um, truck's a bit loose to start with there. We've got some heat to the tyres. And uh, yeah, we're sort of putting too bad after that. Yeah, no, we had a really good start. Nice clean start. Me and Barry went down to turn one and uh, about three laps in, I um, had a top boost hose start to leak and it fell off. So I'd done the best I could with what I had and I just couldn't hold him out. He's just too quick this weekend. So full credit to him and the team. You know, it's just a little mechanical issue with our truck and you now we'll be back and ready to go for the next one. I, I like the reverse grids. I like to sit back and just wait and I'll let someone else part the ways. And um, I just think I'll just sit behind Barry and just wait till it's my chance and then I'll just go head to head again with him. This was a great race, busy for the whole race, which is, you know, when you're running middle or back of the field, it's, that's not often that happens, but that, it was a good race. Yeah, it was side by side, I uh, a bit of trouble getting past him there, but we caught up to him. Uh, I know I can out accelerate him, but I've, he outcorners me, so I've got to try and pick a spot in the straight bit where I can get him, but uh, he, he's, he's got me in the corners, so it's just a matter of keeping close and trying to find a, a way past. I didn't qualify too well, so I'm going to be out the front. So, uh, probably be more of what you just saw, I reckon, if all goes well. <laughs> so, Barry Butwell adds another race victory to his 2018 tally. Let's see if he can maintain that form at the top of the order when we reverse the grid for race three on the other side of the break. Welcome back everybody, this is round four of the Australian Super Truck Championship from Wakefield Park. What an awesome crowd that's turned out at the nation's spectator track. It's called that for a reason and that's because you can see the entire circuit from pretty much anywhere and a lot of fans flocking to the venue to enjoy some beautiful weather and some exciting truck racing. Let's have a look at the grid positions for race number three, a reverse grid based on the finishing order from race two, Anthony Tringali. On pole ahead of Lachlan Fern, back to Marcus Prilwitz and Robbie Fern, Barry Butwell and Stephen Zammett at the rear of the field. Unfortunately, the trucks 
the truck of uh, Shannon Smith, a non-starter in this race due to some mechanical dramas for him in the previous one. A blown piston, I believe, is a problem with uh, the Smith rig. That's why he won't be taking any further part this weekend. Lachlan Byrne in the Little Isuzu has also had a, a myriad of dramas. The first one of the races yesterday, they had a gearbox issue, and then th this morning they had brake failure. So uh, they've attended to both those problems, we hope, and we'll likely we'll see them in this reverse grid race. How good's that drone shot? Really cool angle of the Wakefield Park circuit as the trucks get formed up ready for the rolling start. But that's really a shame for Shannon Smith that he's had that engine drama because he was right in that contest with Barry Butwell for second in the championship. Not starting this race will be a bit of blow to his hopes of taking the runner-up spot as we have a look on board with Lachlan Fern who's in one of the light trucks, the Isuzu. That's actually the X. Steve Coulter truck that was very successful in super truck racing for a number of seasons. Yeah, Jeff Macon also um, drove that to a plume as well, even winning races when he shouldn't have. That's how uh, competitive they were back when they had that truck. They were about to take the start and away they go. Tringali on the outside. You'd think with a little bit more horsepower and engine size might work for him as they head down towards turn two the first time. So Anthony Tringali takes the lead. Lachlan Fern slots into second position ahead of Marcus Prilwitz. And Stephen Zammer looking to make up some early positions. He's got around Barry Butwell. He's lining up for a look on the outside of Robbie Fern as they head up into turn number three. And Lachlan Fern's lost another spot. So Prilwitz has gone down the inside of him. And Prilwitz looking to try and take Tringali over the top of the hill as well. A bit of Morse code on the rear of Tringali's international transstar by the looks of things. We've seen that Prilwitz has been a bit of a specialist in these reverse grid races. He's good at picking his way through the traffic early getting to the lane and then using the clear track to his advantage. He's probably on a bit of a high as well because he won the first Champions uh, Teams event yesterday driving his teammates' truck. So once you get a win under your belt, it sort of makes a difference, doesn't it? And another thing I noticed from this beautiful sky shot that we had there was a big crowd that's here this weekend for the truck racing. Huge crowd. One of the best crowds that we've seen at Wakefield Park in the recent past. Tringali, you can see just how busy they are behind the wheel, having to wrestle with both the steering wheel and the gearbox and here is a replay so this is Marcus Prilwitz going down the inside of Anthony Tringali so that's a move for the lead at turn 10 and it's now Prilwitz out in front. Yeah Fern now will be the next one looking to make a move and as we can see there Zamet and Butwell are next two and they're quite close as well as they head down through that kink that's now called the corner but it's more of a kink isn't it but you have to break before it and then set your truck up for two and coming out of turn two, you can see Zammett not only gets past Fern, he's going to get Tringali as well. Whatever the problem was with Stephen Zammett's truck that saw him slowing down in the previous race, that's obviously well and truly being fixed because Stephen Zammett is slicing his way through the field with amazing efficiency at the moment. He'll be on the tail of Marcus Prilwitz and challenging him for the lead within the next couple of corners. Yeah, I did notice too that Butwell is still at the back, but I guess the uh, the onus is really off his performance now because Smith, having retired from the re remainder of the races, no pressure on Butwell to get to second position in the series. In saying that, of course, though, he'd still like to win a couple of races to finish off the season on a high, but he hasn't been able to make as rapid progress through the traffic as what Zamet has. We see that Zamet now comes up on the outside of Marcus Prilwitz heading into turn 10. They'll run side by side. Zamet looking to do the over and under. He'll get a great run out of the corner. He'll get the overlap. He might even get ahead. In fact, he will before they get to the start finish line. That is the textbook switchback manoeuvre from Stephen Zamet and he goes through to take the lead. And that's also a bit of drive off the corner that helps that one. Here's another shot of it from on top of the uh, Zamet Kenworth and you can see there's just a little bit of a tail wag from that Mac that's in front and that's just giving Zamet the, all he needed to get down the inside and take away the lead. So now he's out in front, he can start to dictate terms. In the meantime, we're watching Pruitts and Fern. Now, have we seen this before this weekend, Lockie? They've been at it since we um, arrived, haven't they? It's been a great scrap between them all weekend. Robbie Fern closing up onto the back of Prilwitz and giving him a bit of a love tap into turn three. Barry Butwell's coming to have a play as well. So Robbie Fern finds himself in a Max Superliner sandwich. Yeah, that's a fairly big uh, one to get your mouth through, isn't it? A 
with those two big trucks either side of you and neither of them wanting to relinquish. Down the hill, Krilwitz has just pulled a bit of space on Robbie Fern. He is a replay of the contacts that we saw between the two trucks up at turn three. Yeah, I think these things are just a knocked off from here. Can you just uh, move out of the way and let me through? And usually the one in front says no. If you're going to have to get past, you're going to have to do it and earn it. Barry Butwell now lining up behind Robbie Fern to try and find his way past the Volvo which we saw was previously run with a fair bit of success by John Falk. Robbie Fern bought it a couple of years ago and has been enjoying it so far, but Butwell down the inside, and he'll move up to position three at turn 10. Yeah, aero's not that important in a truck because of the size of them, and you notice that the, the Butwell truck carries its uh, uh, aero, thing, uh, aero windscreen uh, protection from the sun. Obviously, they don't on a day like today, that's probably pretty handy. Indeed, bright and sunny conditions, beautiful weather at Wakefield Park and as Butwell squeezes past his teammate, Robbie Fern takes advantage as well. So, Prilwitz got checked up on the exit and Robbie Fern saw the opportunity and pounced on it. Yeah, he probably would have been mindful that it was his teammate and he should by all uh, means let his teammate through. He's the one that's further up the series. The problem was that uh, in relieving his teammate of one position, Barry Butwell created the opportunity for his teammate to lose another position. Robbie Fern right down the inside there at turn two and managed to get the better drive up the hill as well. Yeah, no doubt that'll come into discussions after the race when they have a little sit down powwow and so, well, mate, you could have uh, made it a little bit more difficult for him to get past me. I thought I had him covered there for a minute, but as you can see, the inside running always works. So, Stephen Zammett with a handy lead. Barry Butwell's done well. He's worked his way back up to second position. Robbie Fern, this has probably been about the most competitive performance that we've seen from him over a race weekend. Every meeting that he participates in the super trucks, he just gets that little bit closer to the front of the field. And Butwell using all of the curve and a little bit more coming down the hill at turn six, dropping the right hand wheels out into the grass. Yeah, just so that he can uh, keep that advantage. Keeps it nice and clean on the exit. And Fern has nowhere really that he can go at the moment. Butwell just driving in the right spot, the right part of the track, not making any errors. Beats it down through turn 10 here, Fern can only hope to find some way around. There's Robbie Fern in the pilot's seat, so to speak. You're up nice and high in one of these things. You can see everything that's going on around you and more so. Definitely gives you a great vantage point for a nice view of the circuit. And despite their mass, these trucks actually handle pretty well over the top part of the circuit with the direction changes. They are surprisingly nimble for just how big they are. Robbie Fern looking really strong at the moment. So having cleared Marcus Prilwitz, he's now putting pressure on Barry Butwell in the battle for second position. You're yeah. absolutely right there, Lockie, about how, how good these things are. They're not like your prime mover that you see pulling a rig around on the road. They are actually purpose-built race trucks. So effectively two big uh, steel rods running all the way down them and um, a as a chassis rail and then of course the wheels and the motor hanging off it in the right spot, bodywork over the top almost like your race car only a much grander scale One of the comments that the drivers made about these trucks is that if you have mechanical problems or parts that need replacing, fundamentally, it's pretty much just the same as a car, except on a much bigger scale. Generally, you need to have multiple mechanics involved to do and undo parts on these trucks. Yeah, and a fairly decent block and tackle if you've got to pull the engine out. Correct, or the turbo or any other associated mechanical components as we start the final lap and uh, it's actually condensed a bit I think Stephen Zammett's probably just managing the gap to the trucks behind at the moment and Barry Butwell's just eased a bit of breathing space ahead of Robbie Fern there in third spot. Robbie Fern's done a good job to keep in touch with these two race leaders they have been the class of 2018 and uh, the more he gets behind the wheel the more laps he does the better he's going to get and I think you could say the same that for all of the newer guys that have come into the sport, like the uh, Tringales and what have you. We've seen that truck in a straight line. It's pretty quick. They've just got a lot of suspension sorting to do on that particular truck to get it get around the corners a bit better. 
the calendar for the 2019 Australian Super Truck Championship. We'll again see these trucks having two rounds of Wakefield Park and two rounds of Winton. Reports that we might be seeing some new trucks and some new drivers and also perhaps the return of some previous Super Truck stars for next season as well. But here comes Stephen Zammett because he is the current star of this category. It's going to be pretty close here though. He's had to move it to the inside because Butwell's caught up to him on the last lap and Robbie Fern's right there as well. So a pretty close finish it will be, but in the end, it's another race victory to Stephen Zammett in the number one Kenworth. Yeah, Barry Butwell across the line in second spot. Robbie Fern across the line in third and some great overhead shots coming out of the leading truck and just a little bit of a celebration on the exit of turn two that's the rear end of it hang out and why wouldn't you be there's marcus prillwitz he just fell back a bit there at the end and anthony tringawi coming home as the next one through in position five there's Stephen our Zeman. race winner what a Direct season power. it's been yeah indeed Direct power steering, long time backer, SRZ Racing. There's the uh, second of the burn trucks getting to the line. And the Izuzu. Confirmation of your results. Zamet Butwell and Robbie Fern, your top three. Marcus Prilwitz, Anthony Trigali and Lachlan Fern are routing out your finishes for the penultimate race of the season for the trucks of Wakefield Park. Yeah, no, it was a very good race. I started off the back there with Barry and um, we sort of went side by side through turn one and it was whoever had the better line got up the front early in the race. So we um, we definitely picked the right one and um, had a good win. So I'm pretty happy with that effort. All the other competitors, the trucks are getting really fast now and uh, they're really giving us a run for our money. So no, I'm really, I'm really happy with how we went in that one. Okay, this is Jackson. Um, we've had Jackson's name on our windscreen for the whole season. Um, last year at Christmas time, Jackson got diagnosed with leukemia and he's been fighting that in hospital and he's had a lot of time off school and you know he's we, we're, we're going all right now aren't we Jackson yeah he's doing really good so um, so this year every race that we've won and every round that we've won Jackson's got the trophy at home and um, what are we mate we're number one number one mate they're gonna fight all the way to the end in this 10 lapper so yeah hopefully we can um, we'll wrap this championship up give the uh, Jackson his trophy and We'll blow some tyres off this truck, eh? Yeah, it was a bit of fun, yeah, coming from the uh, back of the pack. Yeah, got blocked a couple of times and that um, let Stephen get away from me. And at the, by the time I'd got through the traffic, it was just too big a gap to make it up. But that was good fun. Unfortunately, in that race, we blew a turbo gasket by about the second lap, which did put us down a little bit on power. But the last race, we'll just see how we go. Go out there again, see if we can battle our way through the field. Hopefully a bit better result. Yeah, everybody's going to suffer a bit after 10 laps with brakes. There's no doubt about that. And the heat on the motor. It's pretty hot out there. Um, yeah, it was pretty close. It was a bit, a bit bunched up at the start there, but, but once we break free, we um, yeah, sorted out and I put a pretty good chase on on the, on the two front runners. So didn't let them out of my sight this time. So the truck's going really good and handling well. Another excellent performance for Stephen Zammett, but he'll have to do it all over again from the rear of the field in the fourth and final race coming up next. Time for the final race of the season for the Australian Super Truck Championship and everybody in the crowd is poised on their feet, ready for last truck racing action that they'll see this year and once again we're going to have a reverse grid race this time it's based on qualifying time so we will have the very fastest trucks starting at the rear of the field Anthony Tringali up the front once again followed by Marcus Filwitz, Robbie Fern, Barry Butwell and Stephen Zabbitt unfortunately Lachlan Fern and also the other light truck of Craig Yardy and Shannon Smith not on the grid for this final race due to some mechanical problems. Yeah, we knew about the, the blown piston for Shannon Smith. Unfortunately, the two Isuzus have had blown pistons as well. So I put that down a bit to the heat today, Lockie. It has been pretty warm and uh, they've been under a fair bit of stress over the 
preceding races. But at least they'll have a nice off-season break to get those problems rectified and get those trucks back onto the track for the 2019 season as we get set for the final race of the 2018 season. Anthony Trigawi and Marcus Prilwitz will head side by side down into turn number one and I get the feeling we might be seeing a resumption of the battle between those two drivers and also Robbie Fern, who was pretty strong in the previous one. Well, as we mentioned in the earlier race, Tringali has has a similar sort of pace. Well, I was going to say he had a similar pace until that happened. Uh, but he's, uh, he's uh, cornering and uh, set, suspension set up still needs a fair bit of work. And you can see he loses that through the corner and then that allows the opposition just to fire past. Let's and not... <laughs> it's getting in all sorts of trouble out of turn five on the first occasion. Let's not forget that Anthony Tringali is the newest driver in the field and his truck is the newest in the field as well. So still very much a development process for both truck and driver and he will keep getting up to speed closer to the front runners the more time that he gets behind the wheel. Barry Butwell gets down the inside of Anthony Tringali and Stephen Zavitt gets forced onto the grass at the fish hook there by Tringali as well. So Zavitt getting pinched up across the kerb. Fortunately, there wasn't contact between the two of them. Here's a replay of the start, and you can see that Trillwitz on the outside was able to swing across and take the lead. Tringali with the narrower turning and exit from that corner didn't quite have the speed up the hill of some of the others. And then we got the view from inside Robbie Fern's truck on this occasion, and he quickly moves past Tringali and puts all sorts of pressure on the race leader in Trillwitz. But here's another good battle going on, and we're getting a bird's eye view of Steve Zemmett uh, trying to avoid a sort, a sort of somewhat out of control Tringali going through the fish hook. There wasn't a lot of space was there so Zemmett was down the inside and Tringali just turned <laughs> turned across and Stephen Zemmett, good reflexes, good evasive action just to take to the grass and make sure that there wasn't too much contact between the two of them. He doesn't look too perturbed by it at all does he? Just sits there, oh, well it just happens, let's get on with it. And uh, getting on with it. Oh, we've got a drama there for Pruitt's. It's got a tyre. Well, actually, the guard's gone, but it's a good tyre damage as well. Seems to be dropping back off Fern fairly quickly, who goes through to take the lead. So Robbie Fern up to first position. Barry Butwell slots into third position behind his teammate Marcus Pruitt. Stephen Zammett up to position number four after starting at the rear of the field. Here's a replay of that loose bit of bodywork flying off the Prilwitz truck and that coincided with the AAA towing services back Superliner slowing down as well. Yeah, I suspect he's got a tyre going down there. The good thing about having a flat tyre on the back of one of these is you've got three more. And particularly as you've got one on the same side. So you can probably get away with it for a little while. It might not handle quite as well. And now we can see uh, Butwell and Samet push their way through and they now head off after Fern, who's our race leader. So Prillwitz just sidestepping both Butwell and Zemmett as they headed down the hill. You are right about the fact that a flat tyre is maybe not quite as much of an issue on a super truck as what it would be with a car, but still not ideal, and it'll still upset the handling balance for Marcus Prillwitz, and we'll know that he won't be able to push up with any sort of confidence as Stephen Zammett starts to look racy up behind Barry Butwell, the two drivers who've been the ones battling at the front of the field for most of the season, now fighting it out for second position. Zammett with a good run out of turn nine, and he'll dive out for a look down the inside into turn 10. Yeah, it wasn't close enough. He could be also diving out to keep things a little bit cool. Gets a better run out of turn 10. They're going to run side by side down the straight this time. Nothing in it, is there? Look how close they are in speed. So they get down to the control line, but you would think with inside running through the kink into turn one and two that Zammett might just have the advantage to get his way past, and he does. Well positioned there on the inside, and he will move through into second position. Got a bit of a margin to try and hunt down, though, for Robbie Fern, who's taken advantage of the battling behind to pull a fair way ahead in the lead. Here's another look at Zammett getting down the inside of Butwell through turns one and two. That was actually set up at the top of the straight, wasn't it? Because Zammett got the better run out of turn number 10. He had the overlap and he had the inside position when they got down to turn two. Yeah, nothing in difference in their pace. It's just that enough of a, uh, a, a crossover that he could 
keep that line down into the kink and obviously take the lead at turn two. And now we're watching Buttonwell. Can Buttonwell get back and try and pass Zamet? This will be the burning question. And can the pair of them get towards Robbie Fern, who is yet to win a race? And this would be certainly a milestone should he do it. Stephen Zamet still pushing hard. He drops the wheels off the racetrack at turn nine. And you'll notice that on the top of the windscreen there for Stephen Zammond as he comes under more pressure from Barry Butwell, the name Jackson Brown. And uh, that is young five-year-old sufferer of leukaemia who Stephen Zammond is publicly supporting and acknowledging this weekend. Yeah, to the point that all these trophies have been donated to young Jackson and he's made up another... He wants to get this one. He wants the sixth one to give him as well. It's such a, a sad story, the Kenya is such a vile disease, and especially one so young as well. So Zamet holding off that attack from Barry Butwell at turn number 10. These two are going to keep battling, and all this is allowing is for Robbie Fern to maintain his margin at the front of the field. It's not exactly a smooth ride in one of these, is it? He's kept a bit buffeted around inside it quite a bit, but he's all taken it in his stride, and... Uh, as long as he covers Butwell in second, in third position at the moment, that's all he needs to do as he's already uh, well on his way to taking title number six. The celebrations will come afterwards. At the moment, he's just concentrating and see if he can get towards Robbie Byrne and another race win. So Stephen Zammett with the title pretty much in the bag, but with the likes of Barry Butwell and Robbie Fern, some of their improvements in performance over the course of the season. You get the feeling that in 2019, Zammett's going to have to work pretty hard if he wants to try and make it a seventh Super Truck title. The calendar's been confirmed for next season. Once again, there'll be two rounds of Wakefield Park. There'll be two rounds of Winton Motor Raceway. In this particular round, which uh, culminates their season, usually at, at this time of the year, uh, November, towards the end of the month and uh, certainly the warm conditions. Pruitt does make his way in the pits and uh, obviously uh, rear tyre damage, that's what we're assuming anyway, as Lachlan Fern's dad, Robbie Fern, continues to lead this one. Lachlan Fern, unfortunately a non-starter, as Gary mentioned, due to some engine problems in the lead up to the race. And Robbie Fern looking pretty composed, isn't he, behind the wheel? He is, and uh, obviously if he does get this one across the line, it will be uh, celebrations out of two trucks by the end of this. Maybe Barry Butwell as well, because he, he's probably uh, more than likely in second position in the title chase anyway. So Robbie Fern, he's won a couple of the team's championship races, but he's never actually won one of the proper super truck championship races. So if Robbie Fern can hold on, it will be his first race victory in the Australian Super Truck Championship. And he's doing everything that he needs to do at the moment. Last lap coming up this time around. So 2.2 kilometres of racing left to come from the Super Trucks for season 2018. And it's Robbie Fern with a nice advantage over Stephen Zammett, who continues to hold out Barry Butwell in the dice for second and third. It's been uh, pretty much the story of the season. These two in second and third. They have been the class of the truck racing field. As, uh, as we talked about during the course of the day, that the, the newer blood coming into the sport are learning their way around it and getting better and better at each meeting. Two rumours floating around the paddock of Wakefield Park that we might even see a female driver on the grid in the Super Truck Championship in the very near future. So that'll be one to watch out for heading into next season and beyond. So, Well, worth noting that Bo Hewitt had a drive here in the Champions Teams event uh, yesterday, and uh, that sort of augurs that he may be making a return as well be, and as a previous champion. That'll certainly uh, liven things up at the front of the field. And uh, also some reports that John Bon Burley might be looking at getting back into it as well. Another drive with a lot of experience in super truck competition. But out of the last corner they come for the final time. And we're going to add a new winner to the vast array of drivers who've won races in super truck competition. Robbie Fern takes his first race victory in the Australian Super Truck Championship. But Stephen Zammett is your series champion. He clinches his sixth Australian Super Truck title. Yeah, celebrations will be going on from now till, well, till after dark, I'd imagine. Especially even for Robbie Fern having his first uh, driver's championship win at least. 
obviously had some success at the uh, Teams Championship events down at uh, Winton at the previous round, but here he is bringing that truck around the top of the track. Robert Fearn was the winner, Steve Salmon in second, Barry Butwell third, Anthony Trigali got across the line in fourth, and as we've seen, Marcus Prewitz called to the pits, unfortunately uh, a non-finisher. Oh no, it's fantastic mate, we've worked hard all year, we um, we come second in that last race, a full credit to Robbie Fern. he had a couple of brake issues earlier in the day and he overcome those and he definitely kept me and Barry on our toes, but you know, me and Barry had a good race together and you know, I can't wait for next year to come round. Yeah, he's not too bad, look I've done a lot of training over the off season, lost a fair bit of weight, so the, the heat doesn't bother me anymore, the truck still struggles a little bit, but that's everyone's in the same boat, so you know, look, uh, end of the day the heat's not too much of a drama for us. I, I don't mind the heat better than rain anyway. Uh, well, 2019 is going to be a pretty full on year. Um, I'm going to miss a couple of races during the year through uh, some other commitments, but um, I've got uh, Brady de Glesh is going to jump in and take over and do a couple of races for me and keep the truck on the track. No, we just didn't have the power out of the corners. We never managed to get that uh, boost leak that we've got fixed. We just had to go out with it like that. So just had to be happy to finish where we finished, actually. Uh, next year we're gonna we've got a, a fair bit more to do to the the motor in the truck itself and we'll give it a real good crack next year. We'll put a bit of pressure on Steve and he won't have it all his own way. Got out with a bit of a lead there and I it was just a matter of keep pedaling and keep the lead and keep the distance on him. So um, yeah, I could see him in the mirror, I knew I was keeping the same sort of pace, so I just tried to keep it going without any mishaps and yeah, got it all the way around. I started okay and the truck was a little bit off pace. And I, look, it was probably a hangover from the previous race, but I was too busy worried about, um, when we came back into the pits, I was worried about fixing the broken track rod. So we fixed that, and uh, but what we didn't notice was the wastegate was about to break off one of the exhaust pipes, so I, effectively I had no boost. And I, I, could have, I probably could have finished the race, but when you don't know um, what's happened, uh, you don't want to catch fire. I need to find some more power. I'm starting to be, I'm starting to get consistent in my lap times, um, so I do. I need to find, and I don't know. Well, I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to do it, but I need to find some more power. So Stephen Zammert successful winning his sixth Australian Super Truck Championship and doing it by a pretty handy margin in the end. Good performance for Robbie Fern getting on the outright podium with third position overall. Barry Butwell, your runner-up for the weekend. He gave it his all, but not quite enough to beat Stephen Zammett, who was victorious in the round. His fourth round win, making it a perfect score for the season. And, and honouring young Jackson Brown, who unfortunately is suffering from a leukaemia, but his name has been on Stephen Zammett's truck this weekend, and good to see him receiving a trophy as well. Let's hear from the truck racing president, Charlie Zammett, to find out a bit more about what's in store for the 2019 Australian Super Truck season. Well, 2019 is going to be basically the same format, the same two races. We've got two races here at Wakefield and two races at Winton. We've also um, we've got another three or four trucks coming onto the scene. So that's that's what's getting we've got to make me excited, you know, because some of the old guys are coming back, some new guys are, are, are building. So um, I, I just can't wait. I honestly can't wait, and neither can anybody else here. So that concludes another enthralling season of Super Truck Racing over four rounds and Stephen Zammett once again the man who prevailed at the end of competition. Thanks for your company. On behalf of Gary O'Brien, I'm Lachlan Mansell. Look forward to seeing you back trackside in 2019.